What are some of the big differences you can expect between building a house from scratch, from the ground up, and buying an existing house? Limited inventory of homes available and low interest rates have caused prices of homes to rise in many markets. Instead of buying an existing home, you might be considering building a new home altogether. I want to break down the financial requirements to building a house so that you can determine whether this would make sense for you. So let's get right into it. Building a home is very different from buying a home, especially when it comes to financing. So if you're talking about building, you're going to need financing for your land, labor, and the materials. So this is a lot more than just buying a house where you just get one overall mortgage. When you decide to build a house, this may require several loans throughout the process. So that's something that you have to be financially ready for. There is a larger down payment requirement than what is expected with a typical mortgage. You can't build a house with a normal mortgage. You have to get out some form of construction loan if you are trying to build from the ground up. So building involves three major steps. The first one is buying the land. The second one is funding the construction. And then the last step would be a long-term financing of your property. So these are three major milestones where in theory, you could have three separate loans, right? You could have a loan to buy the land you're going to build on. You could have another loan for construction of the property. And then you could have a third loan for your long time hold of the property. So this can add up, get kind of costly, get kind of confusing. Construction loans themselves, the actual funding for construction is considered a short-term loan. Typically, these last six to 18 months. So you aren't going to see like a 30-year construction loan. Now, construction loans specifically do not cover the land or the long-term financing. They are only used for the construction of the home. Usually construction loans are also interest only loans. You're not paying anything towards a principal balance like you would with a mortgage. So you would borrow the money from the bank to fund your construction. Then as the construction goes on, you pay interest on the money that you borrow each month to the bank based off of how much you've drawn from your total balance. The rates on construction loans are typically always higher because of the elevated risk that lenders take on when they give you these types of loans. Obviously, with construction, there's a lot more moving parts. You've got a lot of construction workers. You've got contractors and materials, a lot of different moving pieces. Plus, on top of this, the collateral for the loan, which is the house, isn't even existing yet. So the bank is taking on a lot more risks, which just by default comes with a higher interest rate than what you would get for a conventional FHA type loan. So what I wanna to touch on is how does this whole process work once you are interested in getting a construction loan? Once you have your land, your builder, and your house plans, you're going to submit an application for a construction loan. Now, if you want me to break down kind of all those pre-steps of finding the land and the builder and all of that, let me know. I can make another video on that. But let's just say you've already done that homework and we'll stick to the financing for the purposes of this video. First step would be obviously submitting your application, knowing that you've done your pre-homework. Then the bank is going to order an appraisal. This appraisal will be done based off of the plans because there's no physical house for them to appraise yet. So the appraiser is going to go to the lot where you plan on building. They're going to scope it out. They're going to look at the plans and appraise the house based off of the plans because essentially you will be building the house to meet and be exactly like your house plans. The appraisal is ordered by the bank because they're not going to be able to give out any more money than the home is worth. Now, typically these lenders want to see that you are putting down a 20 to 25% down payment. So they'll be giving you 75 to 80% loan to value to build your house. And like I said, the larger down payment is just due to the fact that these are more risky loans when it comes to the actual lending side. The third step is that your lender is going to approve of your builder, your plans, the budget, 
and they will also have to approve your personal finances. So this is not a application for a typical mortgage where it's just like your credit, your income, your DTI. You would have to have all of that checked plus a builder, plus a plan and budget review, and the lender will have to stamp off and approve all of that. Once you get the lender's approval, then you will be able to close on your construction loan. After you close on the loan, lenders are going to issue draws of money to you as construction is completed. Some lenders will have fixed timeline moments in the construction to where they will issue you the ability to get draws of money. Otherwise, some lenders are more flexible and they will let you kind of pick and choose how much and when you can draw funds. Now, an example of drawing as the construction goes on would be if you started your site work and your foundation. So let's say you started excavating, maybe you had to pull out some trees, you clear your lot and you've pre-done your foundation. So your footers are dug and maybe your plumbing work is in. At that time, if the lender verified that that work has been done, they may allow you to take your first draw and then you could pay all of the contractors who have gotten you up until that point. It is very important for the lender to see the progress of the build because they want to know that you're not just blowing all of this money on a vacation. So when you are talking to your contractors and you're considering how this would all play out, you want to make sure that you are upfront with them and you let them know that you have a loan for construction because this will overall affect their timeline for when they can expect to be paid. Some contractors want a partial payment upfront or maybe when they're halfway done with their work, but it would be important and kind of advantageous for you to arrange maybe a 30 day period to where they get paid within the month so that you have time to get your draw from the bank and then pay them. Otherwise, you may find yourself in a situation to where you're having to front the money personally to them and then reimbursing yourself from that loan draw when it comes around. There's really one thing that I want to note in this video, and I think it's financially huge, but it's often skipped over. Every time I sit down with clients and we're talking about the new construction home building process, one thing that always seems to skip their mind is they're, they're financially planning for how they're going to cover construction, how they're going to qualify for this construction loan. And, you know, they're, they're thinking about their overall timeline and how it's going to take, you know, four to six months, six to 12 months. But somehow throughout all of that, they forget that they're also going to have an ongoing housing payment for themselves while the house is getting built. Right. You obviously can't live in a framed up house. You need housing until you get your certificate of occupancy from the inspector. So you have to keep in mind that as you financially plan to build a house, you also will be paying either your current rent or your current mortgage payment until you'll be able to move into and close on your house. Now, just like with mortgages, there are several different types of construction loans. First one that I want to talk about is a one-time closed construction loan. You may hear these called construction to permanent loans. These convert to traditional mortgages after you get your certificate of occupancy without having to close again. So you save yourself in total closing costs by going with the one time closed construction loan. Now, I will just be upfront with you. These are harder to find. There are limited amounts of lenders who do the one time construction loans. Also, they can sometimes have a higher than market interest rate because you are saving and just doing that closing one time. It is worth noting that FHA, VA, and USDA all have one-time close fixed rate construction loans. I do have a video specifically made on the USDA construction to permanent loan, so if you're interested in that, you can check it out up here. But all of those different types of loans do have 
some form of construction package that they offer. This is a little bit of a hassle when it comes to construction loans, in my opinion. I think they're a little bit more difficult overall, but if you have the time, maybe you have limited finances, it could be worth looking into. Now, the second one that I wanna talk about is a two-time close loan. So this would be a construction loan first that you would get to fund the actual build of the house. And then you'd, you'd close on that and get your money to build. Then you would follow that by refinancing with a new closing, new closing costs into a permanent mortgage. Now, when you go this route, you have two loans, two closings, and you have the permanent loan usually lined up with the same lender that did your construction loan. So these two time closed loans really do limit you in who you end up working with for your long-term 15 year, 30 year loan. There also are construction only loans where you are just getting a loan to fund the actual build of the house. Then finding permanent financing would be up to you afterwards. For most of these programs, you need a solid credit history, good FICO score, and a very reliable income. Those are the things that lenders are going to look for if they are gonna give you a loan for construction of your very own house. In turn, lenders are also going to look that you have the ability to make those interest payments that we talked about throughout the construction period. Lenders are going to want to see that you have adequate amount of savings to cover those interest payments, as well as they understand that unexpected costs often come up with construction, no matter how experienced your builder is, no matter how many budgets they have completed. Lenders want to see that you have adequate funds for those unexpected costs, in addition to the 20% down payment that you put down. I do want to specifically note that if you buy your lot, your acreage, wherever you're going to build your house outright in cash or you own a significant portion of it, you have most of it paid off. And the value of that lot, let's say, is or exceeds your 20% that you'd be required to pay and put as a down payment, you can use that lot as the collateral, as your down payment for the loan. So you wouldn't be subject to buying your lot outright, let's say cash, and then also bringing a 20% down payment. They just want to see overall that you've got that 20, 25% invested into the overall build process. Building can be super exciting. It can also be a kind of a headache. So you have an exciting journey ahead of you if you decide to pursue it. Let me know what questions you have about this process. Would it be beneficial to you if I specifically broke down the steps of going through the building process from start to finish, like even finding your lot, finding your builder, developing your floor plans? Let me know in the comments below. I'm Nicole Nark, Arkansas real estate broker with videos to help you find your way home, and I will see you in the next one.